So with that, we've come to the end of four very interesting presentations. I'm sure that you will have lots of questions for all of them, uh, but we have limited time. So uh, my advice is get your hand up as quickly as possible. First question. Uh, usually the first is the slowest, and then I have to turn people away afterwards. <laughs> Go ahead, Abba. I just wanted to say it's, it's been such an interesting panel, and you all look at cities from completely uh, amazingly interesting dimensions. But if you were to, say, f put these four heads together and uh, what you all have been, each have been saying, if it were to put into one city, that would be a great experiment to see how logistics versus energy versus community access and issues versus you know global networking could actually come into one city and maybe Eisenhower Foundation should just fellowship should just do one pilot like this where we can come up with the perfect idea of a city that's low on energy high on community and and all the other logistics any volunteers <laughs> Mumbai I think, I think we're trying everywhere. Uh, I think certainly in Singapore, we're trying uh, to do all of those things. Um, we are much more con we're much more conscious about conservation today, uh, about water usage, about energy usage, about engagement, and um, we have heard from CLC, uh, from HDB this morning about how they try to engage the community. Uh, we, can, we can still do better. Uh, we're working on the urban logistics problem. Uh, Bob knows uh, I'm trying to get one little startup company to solve this problem a little bit. And I'm not sure how long it'll take us to get to 2,000 watts, but um, we're working. We've got to take Philip out of the equation, that's all. Then we all... No, no, he, he's a good, good part in <laughs> John, please. So, um, uh, uh, Dr. Zender. So that was, a that was a fascinating way of looking at, the, at how you can deal with the cost structure. But the question, I guess, is in most societies, how do you, and you talked about the society, the, the cost and the benefits, the cost, the cost can be dealt with. But getting, distributing it out in a way that makes it effective or profitable for a, any individual to do it is a big challenge. So society, benefits but how do you how do you create the incentives in most most of the societies around the world it's uh, it's good thanks for the question because I, I forgot to tell you that actually that <laughs> building that building which is the, the, the most energy efficient building didn't cost one dollar more than if you would have built it normally that means you immediately uh, save on energy and on costs so that's one thing. The other thing is you have to create the market. And creating a market is you have different ways of creating a market. One way is through a regulation. And actually, in most cases, it's done like that. If you put your regulation market in such a way that you say, OK, everything which is new has to go towards this, uh, uh, this goal, and you set steps, then you start to create the market and you push on innovation drastically. And there are, ex there are good examples around the world where actually a good regulation in good time steps and on the timeline actually change the face totally. So the interest becomes also the interest of the individual when you have this regulatory framework in place. So it's always about trying to align interests. And there's an economic incentive uh, as well, um, because you are saving in terms of cost. And that's always a big driver. Um. Yes. Yu Hyun. Did I get your name correctly, Yu Hyun? Ah, uh, yes. Yu Hyun. Yes, right. Um, I have two questions. Uh, I like the 2000 number. Actually, I am a 2000th fe Eisenhower Fellow from the history. They counted the, the number of fellow, and I was a 2000th. So, uh, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I like the number. Uh, but I have a question for the, the Alfonso. Um, 
well, building up the, the, my previous question <laughs> in the previous session, um, you talk about the there's future city will be a very connected, not just the city alone, there will be mega city and interconnected city around the world. And you also mentioned about the connection between the physical space and digital space. So I assume that sustainability concept should be uh, more upgraded, not just the physical space sustainability, but also we have to take account of the digital space sustainability. And I want to uh, get your insight on that. And my second question is to Sasha. So, uh, when we look at the, uh, well, population-wise, uh, there's a statistic that in 2015, the most of the youth, uh, one-fourth of youth are, will be from Africa, and one uh, half of the youth will be in Asia. And also there's a, a fast um, speed of urbanization in Africa and Asia, the cities. So 2,000 number, will it be, uh, still a gold mark, uh, gold standard, as the number of the city will be increased, as the number of, uh, uh, where is it, the energy use will have bound to be increased. And also, the, we talked about the eco-city. Well, eco-city will be, uh, how it, would it be evolved within your theory? So, thank you. Alfonso first. I think um, this is a very, very important question. Uh, deal with the role of cities and the role of the states. Uh, when we talk about diamonds, for, for us, diamond, as I told you before, is a metaphor. Eh? Diamond are these points, lines, and surfaces. You can polish, you can improve your territory. But you need to discover this jewel, you need to discover this. Um, um, uh, diamonds in the shadow. So you need to discover these territories, these emerging territories. For instance, uh, when we did this research on Mexico, the government, federal government of Mexico didn't realize the existence of this space in 6% of the territory, 55% of the, of, the, of the GDP. Eh? But the diamonds uh, do not have government. Government, you have at the level of the city, at the level of uh, the province, or even at the level of the federal states. So uh, diamonds do not have government. But uh, through this vision, you can identify complementary urban profiles for cities. Without leadership, it would be very difficult to orientate the urban policy in one particular direction. So I think it's very important to, to see if is the market who will design the cities of the future, or are the leaders who will design. In my experience, market uh, is a very efficient mechanism to accelerate creativity, innovation, economy, but market is an awful mechanism, mechanism to design cities. So without strong leadership in designing cities, um, the, uh, the, even the, the market place, the, the, the independent uh, developers and stakeholders would find uh, very positive to have visionary leaders that can show the way for the future of a particular, a particular city. The, the good news is the, the scale of the city is not anymore the municipality, is not even the scale of metropolitan area. The new scale of cities are this polycentric structure of cities with complementary urban profiles that will achieve competitive advantage by collaborating. But that will require a new type of leadership, a new type of vision will require research, will uh, define a new, a new um, approach to these uh, particular things. In the case of the Mexican diamond, we have um, 11 cities. Each of the mayor belong to different political parties and different governors. And then you have five ministries taking care of that. The Ministry of Economy the, of Mexico, the, minister, the Ministry of um, Transportation and Communication, the Minister of, um, um, uh, we call territory with Sedatu. So imagine connecting the visions of different layers uh, around a project for a country which is promoting this diamond, the Silicon Valley of Mexico. No? So it's, it's a new, a different scale of thinking where traditional governance need to be uh, rethought. No? 
And Sasha, the question about everybody wants to develop, but can we really keep at 2,000 watts? Yeah, 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 because his leaders need a yardstick, and the 2,000 watt society may be a yardstick which, is, which can be used. I think you are right, you know, the, the cities have to be developed, and my concept is a, long, a little bit longer term, but I give you a very simple example why actually we, as industrialized world, have a vital interest to go as fast as possible to the solution of the 2000 watt society because we have then goods we can actually sell to these places in Africa and in Asia. And take the example of the mobile phone. The mobile phone has not been invented for Africa. But Africa is now the continent with most of the mobile phone because they jumped one a step in the, in the development. They didn't have the landlines, so they didn't put the landlines into it. And I think we have to, uh, to, to bring up such solutions, and actually they are there, where these new cities can actually make the jump from the technology of now to the technology of after tomorrow. And if we are putting this regulation in place and this development in place, it's also for us economically interest. It's not interesting, it's not only helping for them, but there is a market which is built out there and that it will, it will move in this direction. I think the mobile phone is a superb example. Uh, we have developed it for us to, to make our life easier and more efficient and actually at the end of the day it's Africa which has the highest percentage of mobile phone coverage of the world. I learn something new every day. I never knew that. <laughs> Africa is the highest. Wow. Who would imagine? OK. I think it's been a long day. Uh, we've solved all the world's problems. <laughs> but you know, just reflecting on, just reflecting on uh, the conferences I've attended through my short career, um, ten years ago, we would have talked a lot about globalization, about competitiveness, about economic drivers, um, about interdependency. Today, the language is very different when we're talking about the future. We're talking about sustainability, we're talking about managing the resources, about engagement, about involvement, about buy-in, about the need to work together in order to solve these wicked problems um, that the black swans bring. And so I think it's been a, a rich um, mix of ideas, and I hope that uh, this, this has been, been helpful. But please join me in thanking uh, our very distinguished panel.